If there is no process.php, it's going to say this page cannot be displayed. And uh, anyway, so what is this post you're asking? Method equals post. I am not, I cannot give a uh, full description of what post and get are and how to handle the data in PHP because this tutorial is not on that. But what I am going to tell you, so you can be prepared for when those tutorials come around, is that there are simply two types of data that can be sent. Alright? There is post data, and there is get data. Technically, in PHP, don't let this scare you, we're going to be deleting this, is, it looks like that. Dollar sign underscore post and dollar sign underscore get. Now, what is the post data as opposed to the get data? The post data sends directly, I'm sorry, the post data here, sends directly to process.php. It's encrypted when it goes over. And the user has, I mean, no clue. I mean, you can't modify it. It doesn't get sent through the URL, anything. It's literally completely invisible, and it goes from point A to point B. And at point B, it takes the data, and it processes it. So post is definitely the most recommended, but sometimes you do need to use git. And uh, I don't expect you to be able to understand why to use git right now, because uh, <laughs> unless you know PHP. If you know PHP and you've... Uh, you have experience in it, you know that uh, you have to use get. So what is get? Well, if we were to type get in here, as opposed to post, if we were to type get, what it would do is it would take all this data and it would send it to process.php. So it would go to, you would be, as soon as you hit the submit button, all this data would be sent to process.php with a method of get. And how it does that is it redirects you when you click the submit button. So you go, your URL is redirected to php or process.php, question mark, and whatever name attributes you have in here. This is why the names are important, because whether it's post or get data, post or get data, whether it's either one, you're going to be using the name attribute. So you have process.php, and let's say you did type in your first name there, and your, uh, yeah, you typed in your first name, so here's our name attribute for that you typed it into the text field when you hit the submit button it would go over like first name equals and let's say I put in Graham that is literally how it would appear in your address bar in your web browser and it may be there for a second two seconds that depends on the pro how the PHP is coded but uh, to store the data and how long it takes before it redirects it but basically as soon as you hit the submit button this attribute, there's a question mark that goes into the address bar, followed by the process.php and first name. And, literally, in an ampersand, and every attribute after that. So, and, we have another name attribute for our password called password. Fairly easy to understand, and that can be encrypted, but call that 12345 or whatever. And, uh, basically, you just put an ampersand after each and every attribute. So and uh, mail equals true or selected because that was a radio button. It is you don't technically put anything in there. And uh, we have a button attribute, but like I said, that isn't that doesn't store data which is sent. So don't really be worried about all that. That's all going to be covered in heavy detail when we get to the PHP tutorials, but. Oh, this is really 100% just a form tutorial. I wanted to introduce you how to make a form element, uh, declare where all the data would get sent, the method of which we, I, I did say, the method of which needs to be default post. So uh, you can go ahead and save this if you want. You can preview it, and it's all good fun. So I'm going to do that. You can do this in Notepad. You go to File, Save As, Desktop, and I'll call it index.html. And then I'm going to go up to the little browser here and preview in Firefox. And here it is. So we have our first name, password, male, female, whichever one you want to check. And uh, click me. And you can see that click me button still does not do anything. Yep. But uh, I hit submit data. And what did I say would happen since there's no process.php file? Oh, what do you know? File not found. But you see what would have happened. 
in my URL up here, it goes to process.php, and technically if this was on a web server, all that data would be processed that we typed into this form. So, with that, guys, not only is this going to conclude the tutorial, this is actually going to conclude my series on HTML. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, as I said in my first tutorial, it's all the basics of the basics. So just mess around with it, have some fun, you know, create a couple of things, and make yourself comfortable with HTML. And when you're ready, you can move on to my next series of tutorials, which is CSS. And uh, CSS is what makes everything efficient and pretty. I mean, literally, the most modern of websites. So if you want to be a really good web developer, stay tuned for all my CSS tutorials which are coming after this. After that, of course, I will go on to PHP. And uh, I don't know where I'm going to go after PHP, but that is way down the road. So stay tuned, guys. Rate, comment, subscribe. My name is Graham with Tutorial Clarity. Take care. Peace.